everyone. Today we're going to be going through my Axie Light State Machine. This is the full code that I alluded to in my last video. If you want to find out details about an introduction to Axie and Axie Light, then you might want to check that one out. This one just goes through the entire State Machine and the Axie Light register interface uh, reads and writes. This is the video DMA call that's the Xilinx one and it's really nice because you can simulate with it, which is what I'm doing now. So I'm in simulation talking to the VDMA core. I'm just using it as an example. These are just dummy numbers that I've put in here. So let's look at my state machine. Okay, we're going to head up to the top. And we're going to start with my, this is, these are all my top level external signals. I have my address and data width, and then I have my axis signals that are in. All of these are capital. Everything that is an external interface signal and a parameter are capital letters. I have two local params, which are my video size, because this is the VDMA core. So we have video and these are the video parameters. Internal signals are lowercase. External signals are uppercase. The reason why I do this is because it's nice to be able, there's a, I have a spiel here that you can read if you want. It's nice to be able to tell what's coming in and what I'm driving because I don't want to drive external signals that are coming in. That's going to cause a conflict on the bus and I need to be able to easily separate what I'm driving and what's coming in that I need to look at and deal with but not touch effectively. When I have external signals like outputs that I'm driving, I like to convert them to internal signals and make them lowercase. And that just way I know what I'm driving is lowercase, what is being driven externally and I'm receiving is uppercase. And that just saves a lot of hassle when it comes to working with your signals. So then I set up a couple of flags. This is my write done flag, which is when be ready and be valid are high at the same time. That means the transaction's done and read is done with are ready and are valid is high those are those and then my initiate transaction i do an edge detect on my initiate transaction which is an input and that is just so that i don't initiate a bunch of transactions one after the other i just do an edge detect on the rising edge by registering it for one clock cycle and then checking the point where the one signal is high and the other is low so that detects my edge and then we have a state machine so these are all my states i have three right states and three read states and I indicate whether I'm doing a write or a read by with start write or start read. Transaction is initiated, the stock goes high and that transitions me from my idle state into my first register state. So you will notice here that there are no nitty gritty details of my Axie writes in the state machine. It's basically just start Okay, go to the next state. Is that right done? Go to the next state. Is that right done? Go to the next state. Is that read done? Go to the next state. The reason why is because this is supposed to be like top level control over the test that's running as a whole. I don't want to have to handle nitty gritty details of my Axie transactions in the state machine. So when I'm doing a state machine, I try and make it as high level as possible because I want to be able to control the states. I don't want to have to control the details from the state machine. The details are below. If I can just have one or two key signals that clearly indicate where I am and where I'm going, that's good. You'll also notice that this is a combinatorial block, which means that it is not registered. I think this is the three process state machine. If you are not familiar with the Sunburst Designs process state machine paper, white paper on the two, three, and four process. I can't remember. There's like several of them. I really like this model. It goes through the pros and cons. It's linked in the description if you're interested. I always go with this particular one. And this particular one is made of a combinatorial block and a register block. So the combinatorial block lines up what my next state's going to be and my register block registers my next state into my current state. This is really nice for detecting edge detects on my states so that if I want to detect the transition from the one state into the next, I can do that. If you don't have this, if everything is just registered, every time you detect a, a state transition, it's one clock cycle later. Now I just line up my address values. For my state, 
I just, my address is the same the whole time. It means I don't have to think about it. If I'm in that state, then that's the address. So I have a, a state per register that I'm writing into. If you had a ton of registers, I probably wouldn't do it this way, but for a few registers, I just drive the address high the entire time. It doesn't matter. So if you look at the example here, pick bring in the state signal, you can see here for the entire time I'm in that state, that signal value is driven. Then I know that that value is correct on the bus the whole time. The same for the data. During that state, I just put the data that I'm writing on the bus there and then because then I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to drive it in a register somewhere or think, you know, oh, I have to time it now. It's coming in. I need it on the bus now. It's just there for the entire duration of the state. And if valid's high or not, it's fine. It's, the data is always there. It's always constant. It's always ready. And then the same for the address read. The addresses are waiting on the bus for me to do the transaction. And then I have also got the expected values because I have a check that checks whether what I, that what I read back is the correct value. So I have my expected values of what I expect to read back during those states. This is my address, right? All I do when I start the transaction, I put my valid high, I keep everything stable until the ready comes back and then I do assert valid. It's a really, really simple transaction. In this comment here, I talk about how it's really nice to have the inputs in capitals and the lowercase signals be what I'm driving, because now I can clearly see the ready is what's coming in and the valid is what's going out. So having this ready in uppercase means that I know not to touch this ready. I'm not driving this ready. I'm not messing with this ready. I can use it in my combinatorial logic, but I can't drive it. And it's really nice to keep track of that so that I know what's mine and what's coming into me that I can't mess with. So I know that the valid is the one that I'm driving in this transaction. That's actually really useful because if you look down here, the valid is what's coming in and the ready is what I'm driving. And this is my response check. We'll get there in a moment. The right interface is exactly the same, except we have this strobe signal that's going along with the valid. I actually could make the strobe signal just high all the time because the valid is what matters. The strobe is just a flag indicator. So that's just traveling along with the data. So I actually could put that up here if I wanted to. And then the be ready, ready is always ready for a response. When the valid and the ready come in, I check that the response is zero. So this response is only a valid value when we have valid and ready high at the same time. And then I just check whether the response is greater than zero or not, because greater than zero means there was an error. And then we do the reads. So at the start of the read, I drive the read valid high, exactly the same as the write. When the read valid and the ready come in, I drive the valid low again. And then the read response, I'm always ready for the read response. And then when the response comes in, I check the response to check if it was zero or not, if there was an error, or if what I read is not what I was expecting. And same here, I can see that this is the data I expected, and this is the data that I got back. And if those don't match each other, then we know to indicate an error. And if neither of these cases happen, I know we're cool. And that's the end of the module. And that's what that looks like. So I hope that this could be helpful for you. The code is in the description in my GitHub repo and I will see you in my next video. Bye.